Bondi Rescue Bali. Wait, please, please. A simple rescue gets complicated. It's looking very shaky, Azza. He's getting worse. Surfers behaving badly. He wants to fight with me. I can fight with him. With ugly consequences. The Bondi boys chase some of the world's best wives. Dump me back in. It's all worth it. Sweet. And the end of a Bali high. It's like a footy match. Oh, yeah. Yeah. After two months on Cooter, the Bondi boys' tour of duty is almost at an end. Hello? Aren't you a little monkey? <laughs> For all its differences, life on Cooter has uncanny parallels to Bondi. Both beaches are a paradise for hyped up kids and kicked back parents. Lifeguards find themselves child minding on a very dangerous playground. Three sisters on inflatable donuts are floating out to sea in a rip. Lifeguards respond to a situation the girls are blissfully unaware of. If you see someone floating in a tube, you sort of think, oh, they've got a safety device, you know, they'll be all right. But once in the impact zone, if you lose it and you can't swim, then you're in trouble. As Yatesy and Marcello head out, the Cooter Circus is in full swing. <laughs> At the back of the rip, lifeguards corral the circus runaways. They have no idea about all of things, uh, what do you call this, a balloon, bubble? It's called a it's donut. donut for disaster. Yeah, you should pop it. Pop it. This is not allowed in the beach. This is not allowed in the beach. Eh? Can, can anybody swim here? Swim? Swim, yeah. Are you good swimmers? No. No, no, I can't swim at all. No. Well, then these are really dangerous. Reedy's education program has its limitations. As the lifeguards resume their watch, it's soon clear the message didn't get through. The tubes are heading back out. <laughs> and I'm sensing a little bit of deja vu. The marching band is back. Absolutely ridiculous. Safely rescued a second time, there are still plenty of other kids getting into trouble. Cooter's only jet ski is called to pluck two more youngsters from the rip. Back on shore, seven-year-old Jade and eight-year-old Alex reveal how their holiday took an ugly turn. We thought we were coming back, but we were actually being pulled out. And then he went on the surfboard with another man, and then I went on the jet ski. I was almost going to drown or something. And then he started crying. What? No. <laughs> I was losing my breath. Then you were crying. I was going to cry. Up the beach, Jade's mum and sister are very relaxed about what happened. I didn't see very much of that. And Jade's at a learning stage right now where she's finding out what her limits are. She, she had a nasty scare, which is actually very good because she needs to learn fear. She needs to learn the power of the ocean. She needs to learn how to respect that. Rips are one danger on Cooter. Hundreds of surf craft are another. Yeah, sama adiknya main surfing. Mana adiknya? Eight-year-old Marlo has been struck behind his ear by a surfboard. Yeah, okay, it's going to have a little bit. <laughs> it's all right. You're very strong. An out-of-control board can become a deadly menace in the surf. On this occasion, it seems Marlo was a victim of friendly fire. So his big brother was catching this wave same time with him. He fall, and then uh, his brother's board ran on his head. <laughs> Marlo has the injury, but his older brother is also hurt. Off to hospital for a few stitches, Marlo's surfing career is on hold.
yeah. I feel emotional because I have a big brother who loves me so much. And, yeah. you know, for me, it's to see his brother yeah. hug him and feel sorry what happened yeah. to his younger brother, I so touch. That's different. Uh, In Australia, if I run over my sister with a surfboard, I point and I laugh at her. <laughs> Minutes later, a man reports that a surfer's loose board nearly struck his toddler in the shallows. Almost there's an accident with the children. Oh. So I said you use the rope leg yeah. in order to save, you know? So now... They're fighting? Still... No, no, I, I, he wants to fight with me. I can fight with him. Oh, yeah. Come now. Go have a look. Lifeguards decide to pull the dangerous surfer into line. It's a man, you know. They like to fight, but uh, me, I don't want to fight. I can fight, but I don't want to fight. Oh, this man, you know, he's coming. Yeah. I don't need a leash out here. Yeah, you know, I've been surfing for 40 years. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need a leash. Yeah, I and I don't lose my board. I don't hit anybody. Yeah. I mean, I can surf. You want to surf? You have to use the leg right rope. Okay, no problem. I'm done anyway right yeah, now. Yeah, that's... Thanks, bud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aloha. Aloha. Whatever you say, you know, it's not safe if, if you don't use the leg rope. Um, on behalf of Kota Beach Lifeguard, would like to make an announcement. With more and more incidents, Marcello decides the throng of surfers need to be cleared well away from the flags. Please clear the aisle right now. Otherwise, we're going to come out there and grab your board and make it a couple pieces. You hear me? Please Not everyone is listening. Soon, another victim. It's a really big card, like hit it probably around 10 or 15 stitches and really deep too. The surfer suspected of causing the injury ignored lifeguards' directions and continued surfing between the flags. Oh, no, the man. The man, now the man. they've had enough. Everything is gonna be alright in the summertime Baby, in the summertime That is where I'll be I don't want to travel actually, so he's he's realized that and he's sorry about that. And we are we piss again. <laughs> On an island renowned for its tranquility, peace is never far away. Whippet and Reedy are visiting the village temple of local lifeguards Merman and Crazy. It's really in there. Today is Galungan, one of the most important days on the Hindu calendar. Today is a very big day in Bali, especially for the Hindu people, which is, we call it Galungan Days or Balinese Christmas. Galungan celebrates the battle between good and evil. On this day, the good spirits win. Everything they do over here refers to the gods and everything happens to them for a reason. Um, so, yeah, for the, it's good for, to be able to see that side of them as well as the fun side that we get to hang out with down the beach every day. If anything, it's sort of made me think about my life a little bit too, you know, and, and how I live it and, and, and where it's going, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, it just, it makes you realise that... <laughs> the temple may be a holy place, but it's not without unholy sounds. Sound farted. You let rip. <laughs> Thank you for bringing us to your temple and to your home yeah. and uh, allowing us to share a special day with you guys. It's really good for us to be able to see this, you know. 
Bali has been a mecca for surfers since the 1960s on the eternal search for perfect, uncrowded waves. The search is on again. 60 kilometers to the east of Bali is Lombok and the legendary surf break, Desert Point. It's possibly one of the best waves in the world on its day, so hopefully it's, it's uh, firing today. Mate, it's the hard, hardest thing in the whole world is getting good waves. I've been uh, looking for them all my life and it's very hit and miss. I'm a bit nervous. These guys like it when it's huge. I, I, I'm not as comfortable as these guys or yourselves. Hours later, the surf-hungry group have crossed the Lombok Strait and arrived to a heart-pounding site. Look at that! Woo! Could definitely be up there with the best waves you're ever going to get, and it's pretty sick when you're on the boat to be thinking in the next couple of hours I could get the best barrels of my life. But they could also risk the worst surfing injuries of their lives. Yeah, it looks pretty perfect from the land, but when you're out there, you got to realise it's like two feet deep, and the waves are like solid four feet, so. There's a lot of room for air out here. It does pick up on the lower tide, so it's already four feet now, so we're expecting it to double up for sure. Azza takes the first wave. Surfers washed onto the razor-sharp reef reveal just how shallow it is. Whippet follows soon after. Matt D joins in the fun at a surfer's ultimate playground. so shallow out there. I was just uh, bouncing up and down off the reef. I hit the bricks more time than a Parramatta brick layer, mate. <laughs> I've smashed me hand, I've hurt me feet, I've done me back in, but it's all worth it. This is what life's all about, for sure. You know, we're all here, mates, getting perfect waves. It's just unreal. Cheers to a couple of good barrels. And, you know, it's been a good experience, the whole thing, working with all the boys over here. Working with all the Bali guys, it's been unreal. And to come today and get the best waves of my trip so far, it's, uh, it's been pretty sick and stoked. You kind of made me cry. That was, a little bit. That was really emotional. It was definitely a bit... A bit, uh, bit You want to hug us all now? Or what? Oh, I know. You've got a spare <laughs> hug. Come on in, come on in. <laughs> Later that day, back on Kuta, the solid swell has dropped. But conditions are still dangerous. Post two, a flash rip has pulled a man and a woman beyond their depth. Unable to swim, they've started to go under. Only 30 metres off the beach, the drowning pair have taken lifeguards by surprise. A woman struggles to keep her head above water in a rip. A swimmer comes to her aid before the lifeguards reach her. Her boyfriend is still in trouble until a surfer helps the man in crashing waves. Yeoman and Maddie D finally arrive. Matt calms the woman down so he can get her onto the rescue board. It's okay, it's okay. Come on. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Safely ashore, 28 year old Yanni reveals her terror. Scary, huh? Okay. However, Yanni's boyfriend, Chichep, is not okay. Lifeguards call for oxygen. One, two, 
Okay. The 38-year-old is out of the ring, but not out of danger. Yeah. He's looking very shaky, Azza. Yeah, he's... That's his heart. Bracing. Yeah. A lot of water. A lot of water. A lot of water. Okay, he's gonna have... Tell him he's gonna have to go to hospital then. Papa, tell him, mate. He almost looks like he's getting worse, I reckon. As Chechep waits for the ambulance, another situation develops in the same rig. A man who at first appeared to be happily swimming with a friend is in serious strife. <laughs> then 25-year-old Freddy starts behaving erratically. I was just sitting there watching him. They were going under. I thought he was uh, waving his hand. He's mate. He was underwater. Give him a bit of an oxygen, mate. Yeah. Don't swim if you can't swim, OK? Tell your yeah. friend. Can you ask him if he swallowed much water? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, my water. He's going to have to go to hospital, yeah. The ambulance arrives for Chechek, whose condition has deteriorated further. Drowning victims who take water into their lungs can suffer what's known as secondary drowning. Freddy has also taken in water. Azza wants him to go to emergency as well. Hey boss, sit down. Ultimately, the decision lies with the patient. Freddy chooses to walk away at his own risk. Hey, okay? Back in the ambulance, Chechep drifts in and out of consciousness. You need to, like, keep talking to him and keep him, like, alert okay, okay. with no sleeping. But getting to hospital is proving to be difficult. Oh, we can't get off the beach. Oh, uh, they've blocked the road off the beach. He's going to punch it. Hold on. Hold on. Look at this shit, man. <laughs> oh, man. biggest concern is whether Chichet is at risk from secondary drowning. He was under for not too long, yeah. but uh, they said he swallowed a lot of water. Oh. And he's been like, oh, semi-conscious. We're going to get an x-ray, hopefully he hasn't got water in his lungs. And uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully he goes home and they can celebrate Christmas tonight. X-rays confirm Chichet has taken salt water into his lungs. Usually when the water in the lung, it will affect the movement of the lung, so the patient usually have a difficulty in breathing. We have to observe the patient two or three days, yeah. His mother by his side, Chichep faces a long wait before he's given the all clear. Arnold's got no pulse. So we continue with uh, EAR, expired air resuscitation. After two months, the Bondi Boys tour of duty is winding up. The donated equipment they'll leave behind includes two quad bikes, a spinal board, first aid kits and resuscitation equipment, all in the trained hands of the Balinese. Stand clear of patient. Okay. Wow. It's uh, very rewarding when you're training someone up and, and they're really interested in it. It's a really good feeling. Best of all, on a beach that claims an average of 12 drowning victims a year, no one has drowned in the past two months. As important as the exchange of skills is a simple exchange of friendship. Not only have we made lifelong friends, we've also gained uh, invaluable experience working alongside you guys. But before saying goodbye, Azza has an announcement that will help Bali's lifeguards enter a brand new era. <laughs> All the boys have been nice enough to donate out of their own wages. We've come up with some money so you guys can buy some more equipment. We've come up with 25,000 Australian dollars for you guys. The gift is a cash donation from all of Bondi's 35 lifeguards. Deep in our heart, really happy, really grateful. My partner is a lifeguard here. We see how hard they work on such little equipment, so yeah, the donation will do great. The last hurrah is a relay race. Cooter's six lifeguard posts pitted against each other with a Bondi lifeguard assigned to each team. Well, I think 
Whipping whippers out in front. He's wearing speedos and he's going out hard. Followed by Azza. Whippet cracks away for his team and opens the gap against Azza. Whippet just gave him 100 metres. Look at him. Providing fit. Get in, get in. No way. You know, if they can save a couple of extra lives a year with some good equipment, then it's definitely, you know, a bonus for us. You used to be good, Azza. You're washed up, mate. You're over the hill. We've had a great stay here and made a lot of good friends and hopefully the lifeguard service will be a better service when we walk away from here and Cooter and Leggy on Beach will be a lot safer. He went in 50 behind, he's come out 50 in front, so see how our board paddler goes. I hope he falls off. Eck is coming, he's about, yeah, two lengths behind as his team. With bragging rights up the grabs, it's all down to the runners. Have a look at him, have a look at his back whip. Back, back side. Run, run, run. Woo! Oh my God, let go! In the end, Marcello takes line honours for women's team. Emotional times. Unfortunately, we have to leave tomorrow. Yeah, for all of you done for us here for this two months. But so much appreciated from Bali Lifeguard. Oh, we've had the best time ever. Hopefully next year we can come back and do it again. It was like a footy match. Oh, yeah. With the job in Bali now complete, there's only one thing left to do. on your face a little bit and just breathe in. Come on, stay with us, buddy. Calm down, calm down. Mate, I'm waking up. I'm waking up. Swimming in a bit of red yellow flag, or I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs>